and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. This is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. So much to talk about this week, but we are going to start as usual by taking a look at some of those headline news that drove price action. From there, we're going to review the broader markets and I'm going to share some rotation that is getting quite firmly in place. So first up last week, we did see retail sales rebounding in April. That gave a bit of a boost to some of those retailers. Walmart came out with good numbers, but the response was not overly joyful or positive, certainly among those retailers. We'll get into that. Also, we did see April industrial production. It did rise after two months of flat performance there. So we are still seeing pockets of vibrancy in the economy. We did see home builder confidence among those builders rise for the fifth consecutive month. And then housing starts did increase due to a lack of homes. So again, vibrancy there. And U.S. jobless claims, they did fall for uh, the first time in a while. That was good news as well. And then also Fed Chair Powell was speaking on Friday, and he did hint at the possibility of continuing this pause on his rate hike campaign. So we did get certainly good news there. Also, we did uh, next week, we will see some very critical inflation data coming up. We are going to get the flash PMI numbers for the service industry, as well as the manufacturing industry. More important is later in the week, we're going to get core personal consumption expenditure data for April. And that is going to be very closely watched by the Federal Reserve, all about seeing that inflation. As you may know, it's been inching lower, still sticky, but we do want to see a continuation of a lowered inflation. So that is going to be quite important. Next week, also, we're going to get the Federal Reserve comments released midweek, and that's going to be quite closely watched for hints relative to the monetary policy going forward. I will say there were about eight Federal Reserve governors that were speaking at various events last week, and net-net, the comments were very mixed relative to that rate hike scenario. Next week also, we will get that Q1 GDP data, a first revision for that first quarter. So we're going to keep an eye on that as well. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the broader markets. And here we are with that daily price chart of the S&P 500. And I'm highlighted again, that 4,200 level, very, very critical area of upside resistance. We did dip above that, actually rise very briefly above that level before pulling back. We closed the week at 4188, so we are getting super close to breaking that upside resistance. And that is very widely watched by the broader markets, so it could be highly impactful. But there is other activity that took place as well that we'll get into. But as we're looking at the broader markets, let's take a look at these momentum indicators RSI positive, heading upward, and the stochastics also heading north and in positive territory. So we did have a pretty good week. It was up 1.7% on the week. And again, we're going to take a look beneath the surface. And let's do that right now. We're going to take a look at the 11 underlying sectors in the S&P 500. I've gone ahead and sorted it buy that relative strength indicator and take a look. Technology front and center, top performing industry group up 4.3%. And we can see this breakaway move upon and after this base breakout for XLK. Nice uptrending black line up through the red on that MACD indicating a new uptrend. And then that RSI heading upward. Now the two, is, two heaviest weighted names in technology are Microsoft and Apple, and both of those names fared okay. I mean, Microsoft was up 3%, Apple only 1.5. So there were other more vibrant areas in tech that are pushing this group higher. We will get into that because we did see nice downtrend reversal and a base breakout among sub-industry groupings in tech. Moving along, XLC, this is going to be all about Google. Last week, Netflix was a very big winner, up 7.5% pushing this communication services sector up. Those two names are about 
45% of XLC is comprised of those two stocks. We can see this nice uptrend shaping up upside momentum on this XLC. C communication services sector. And as we move forward, consumer discretionary was up 2.5%. That's relative to the S&P up 1.7. Uh, we did see outperformance there. What we are seeing in essence is a move into these growthier areas of the market. As you may recall in prior weeks, it was all about staples, utilities, and more staid names such as healthcare. And these are more defensive areas, many offering higher yields. And you can see that they are regressing from this upper quartile as growth comes into play. So let's go ahead from here and take a look at some of the sub industry groupings. Actually, I'm gonna take us back to this sector view very quickly because I wanted to share with you another industry group that was an outperformer of the S&P, and that is financials, XLF. Take a look. The financial sector did move above each of these shorter term and that 50-day moving average, nice volume. A little mixed here on that RSI, your MACD, not quite positive yet, but I am going to share with you some of the bigger moving bank stocks last week and what you will need to be on the lookout for to tell you have these bank stocks reversed. And by the way, that is something that was also good. Last week, a large West Coast bank did report an increase in their deposits, and that was very steadying for these bank stocks, which is good news for the markets. As you may recall, last week, that was an area of certainly uncertainty that drove the markets lower. So let's take a look at some of these sub industry groups beyond the sectors. Again, that relative strength indicator sorting this two month daily price chart view and take a look up here at the forefront IGV. This is the software ETF. We can see that nice black line up through the red indicating that this really period of consolidation has now evolved into a nice uptrend, RSI positive and heading up. And as those of you that watch my show regularly will know that we have been on the lookout for this downtrend reversal and it is taking shape quite nicely. I'll share with you some names and some characteristics to look for in some of these software stocks. The NASDAQ I did not mention, but it was up 3% last week. And you can see we're really making headway as far as moving up to that August last year high in price. That is going to be your next area of possible upside resistance, but the NASDAQ in a nice uptrend. Let's take a look at another technology area and also strong in that NASDAQ, and that is semiconductor stocks. And it did downtrend reversal did take shape. We can see that MACD just getting into positive territory with the semiconductor ETF, and it was up 7.8% into a nice base breakout. This week's MEM Edge report, I will discuss in detail why these groups have suddenly sprung to life. We've added stocks from these areas, and we will review their buy points and so forth as well. But pretty exciting to see movement because we've been in this really rather back and fill price formation here for six weeks. This is the S&P 500. And we did get that nice breakout above the highs of that trading range. So as we move forward, a couple of other areas I do want to share with you. We did see interest rates rise. This is the yield on that 10-year up now at 37 percent. And that is actually normally something that would subdue the advance into these tech stocks, not the case. So very interesting price movement there. And then as we move forward, we can also take a look at the banking ETF, and that is KRE, the S&P 500 Regional Banking ETF. And you can see it's not quite ready for prime time yet. We are seeing this, this is last week's rally, 7 0.6%. However, the RSI did not make it into positive territory. 
We did see that MACD crossover. However, we are well below that net neutral. And then we have this very impending downward trending 50 day simple moving average that we will need to break above before from my work I would get involved. But again, we're going to take a look at some individual bank stocks as we move forward here. A couple of things I want to share with you is a view of those mega cap FANG stocks. And the reason is because we are seeing movement among some names that really have not been participating of late, and that is Netflix among them. We can see this back and fill price formation very much in line with the broader markets sprung to life here with yesterday's big rally, pushing the stock into a base breakout big volume here and it pushed the momentum positively. So I would argue Netflix still further upside price action from here. Another stock that was on the move last week after being in a downtrend, that is Tesla. Now it's not overly vibrant from my work week, but we did move above this 50 day simple moving average. The volume is certainly nice relative to its average. However, we don't have that positive MACD just yet. We do have a positive RSI. So net net, we are in an uptrend here with Tesla. This 200 day simple moving average will be your next area of possible upside resistance. But we are seeing those names that had really sat out the rally taking place in Alphabet among others, those AI driven names. Here we are with meta platforms. So to see the broadening out, at least within these mega names, is quite interesting. From here, I do want to share with you the concept of buying stocks on a pullback. We're also going to take a look at turnaround names. And I think I'll start there because this turnaround concept is going to be really critical when you're looking at some of these software names that have really been down and out. So let's take a look at some bigger names that are beginning to exhibit characteristics of reversing their downtrend. This is Cisco Systems came out with numbers. Take a look at this big volume day here, actually for the week, these last three days, we did see the stock move back above that 50 day. Now we're not quite in the clear yet. Ideally, I would want to see that MACD get up there into positive territory, but we did see that RSI now moving above that 50. I'll share with you a couple of other names that did experience a downtrend reversal so that you'll know what to be on the lookout for. This is EXTR, very similar with that move above 50 day. Nice volume here. RSI is positive. And likewise with that MACD, a little bit of a choppier chart. But here we are with a name that is very typical among software stocks. And this is Workday, W D A Y. The stock did pull back rather dramatically here, but let's take a look at the price action last week because what it did is move the stock above each of these shorter term moving averages. We have that RSI 50 and trending upward and take a look at that MACD crossover black line up through the red indicating that this downtrend has turned into an uptrend and now it is above that net neutral. So if we look at any number of software names, you will know that a lot of them are really down and out and potentially beginning to turn. Here is another name, Analog Devices, ADI. Take a look, a move up above those moving averages, very similar concept, that MACD crossover, now in positive territory, and that RSI trending upward as well. So from here, we can take a look at some of these other software names that really sold off quite a bit, had this rally attempt in January and pulled back. This is DocuSign as one of many examples. Not quite ready. We are finding resistance now at that 50-day moving average. We do have a positive RSI, but we certainly do still have work to do. I will share with you a name that was very big coming out of the bear market 2020, and this is Zoom ZM, and we can see similar dynamics with that downtrend reversal shaping up. We do have positive momentum. However, you're going to want to be aware of how the stock performs around this 200 day, which could easily be potential upside resistance. 
One last name that we can take a look at in software is a stock that was a big winner in the past. And this is Splunk, S-P-L-K. Very similar. You're going to see a lot of those same dynamics as we move through resistance with now positive momentum indicators. So looking quite constructive. And again, you will have a lot of names in software that are exhibiting those same characteristics. You will want to make sure that you're highlighting and focused on those bigger growers, those stocks and companies that are going to have potential further upside. From here, I'm going to share with you some names that had a big gap up after earnings. We are in the ending stages of earnings season. And here's a company that reported earlier this month, uh, Versic, and it's V-R-S-K. Take a look at that gap up and continuation rally. I'm going to add a five-day simple moving average so that you can see when these stocks get going, that does become your area of upside support. Pullbacks to that five-day are very constructive. So from here, I'll share with you another stock that reported gapped up into a continuation rally. This is HubSpot, a top software name, gap up into that nice uptrend rally. So from here, I'm gonna share with you names that had a gap up as well and base build it into a nice breakout this week. So in essence, sharing with you what to be on the lookout for because these names that gapped up on earnings and they are screens that you can run to get in front of them. What is shaping up here with many of them is that gap up into a back and fill formation, a period of consolidation and a number of names from here are experiencing the beginning stages of a secondary leg up or a continuation rally. So another example here, EXAS, here we are with that gap up into a natural period of consolidation after that big move, and then poised for a potential another leg up. Another example here, ID, CDC, gap up, period of consolidation. Keep one, this one on your list. Now, I did want to also share with you, because technology certainly was at the forefront last week, but there are other areas of the market that are experiencing some inner, internal vibrancy. I talked last week about the fact that housing, the market's still super vibrant. I'm going to share with you the industrial ETF XLI. We are seeing higher lows here, a move above these moving averages. So beyond there, we can take a look at a sub-industry grouping, and it is going to be all about those companies that provide goods or actually really needed products for these new homes. First up here is SPXC. I'm going to mark this chart up to highlight because this is Another uh, characteristic that I am seeing uh, more frequently than normal. So this particular company does provide a lot in the way of materials for those builders. And what I wanted to point out here is that gap up on earnings. And in this case, the stock formed what's called a high tight flag formation with that gap up being the flag pole and then a period of back and fill to the point uh, where you are on the lookout for a, an additional gap up that takes you above the high of that first bar. And then we can see a nice continuation rally taking place beyond that. From here, we can take a look at a company that provides a lot in the way of plumbing related products for those builders. The ticker is MLI. And here we are. The company is in a very nice uptrend. Here we are with the MACD crossover back here, and we are continuing to experience a nice continuation rally, really just sharing with you an area that might not have crossed your radar screen, but remains quite vibrant. R-O-C-K, we are in the throes of just now forming a nice base breakout, positive momentum, pretty decent volume on that uptrend there. And from here, 
that is really it for that particular sub-industry group. But I did want to focus also on the concept of buying on a pullback. And I didn't mention the debt ceiling issue. We did see a pause to the negotiations today that pushed the markets down a bit. We may see more volatility going into next week, certainly relative to that, as well as inflation data. So you do want to have a game plan for if we do see any kind of a pullback in the broader markets. I'm going to share with you some of these pullbacks that have been taking place and what to be on the lookout for to know whether it is simply a pullback or more downside ahead. So here we are with Comcast CMCSA. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the company. They did come out with strong earnings earlier this month. And here we are with that pullback that took place. And I'm going to highlight a couple of characteristics that would tell you that it is quite simply a pullback and you can stay with the stock. So up first is the fact that it pulled back to this upward trending 21-day simple moving average found support, and take a look. That RSI, it did trend downward, but it did remain above that net neutral 50. And then likewise with your MACD, it trended sideways during that pullback period, but it did still remain above that net neutral in positive territory. And then since then, buyers coming in, the stock poised for a nice three, four-week base breakout. So from here, I'm going to share with you some names that did not have, they had more than just a pullback. So here we are with GPC, auto supply uh, manufacturer, and it is genuine parts and take a look. So the stock was in the beginning stages of forming the right side of a base here. And we did see the stock pull back. Really wasn't with the industry group. It was a solo pullback, if I may. But let's take a look at what set this pullback apart from Comcast because a couple of factors here. We did see that RSI enter into negative territory. And then, of course, we continued to descend lower. We didn't get that support at that 21-day simple moving average. We can also see that the shorter-term 10-day moving average is now poised to cross below that 21-day, and that is called a death Cross. It's a secondary indicator, but you can see it really does have relevance because we had that take shape back here in March, that green down through the purple, that's 10 crossing below that 21. And now we have this MACD entering into negative territory. Watch out below. Another name to take a look at here as it relates to this pullback concept is ROL. This is another company that is very much close to exhibiting negative characteristics because we can see this pullback has now dipped below that 21-day simple moving average. You will want to keep an eye on that RSI. We can see it's just now poised to cross below that net neutral. And then also we did see that MACD black line down through the red. Now that is not a sell signal in any way. We had that shape up here as an early signal as well. But once we get that negative RSI, we did see a pickup in volume on that selling as well. So this could easily be more than just a pullback. One last name that we can take a look at here that actually was a mere pullback. It does not appear poised for further deterioration, and that is C-O-K-E. So let's take a look. Here we are with a big upward move here, nice volume. The stock did pull back, and in this case, to its nice 10-day simple moving average, your momentum remaining up here in positive territory, and the stock poised to trade higher. So this particular case we can see that it could very easily be just a mere pullback. Last up here, I am going to share with you, I talked about some of those bank stocks that really came through with performance last week. Uh, CMA, that's Co. America Bank, up 19.5%. Now let's take a look at some of the dynamics at this juncture. We can see here that the stock is exhibiting a higher low 
up here. And we are potentially in the beginning stages of reversing that downtrend. However, your momentum, not there yet. And I did talk about that earlier. I will need to see the sub industry group begin to firm up more before getting involved. Let's go ahead and take a look at another stock that had a big move this week, and that is Zion up 18%. So we can just pull up Zion here and it, you're gonna see somewhat similar characteristics up here finding resistance at this downward trending 50 day simple moving average. We did dip into positive territory with that RSI MACD crossover, but again, too soon to tell. So from my work, I will need to see more in the way of upside price action. And that is it for this week. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. Hit that like button below if you like what you've seen. And as always, I welcome any questions or comments as we move through these markets. You may want to try out my MEM Edge report. Use that link below. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next Friday. Thank you.